We are Caught on Klein. We're out of Northwest Indiana in Chicagoland. Taking the ideas of all the different types of music that I play, and then like how I feel spiritually and like socially. So bringing people of diverse backgrounds and viewpoints and that sort of thing and creating a style of music and a movement, a community, so to speak, to like kind of push that forward musically. And so that's kind of what, what the whole premise was, was a mixture of like jazz, R&B, funk, soul, world music, you know, a little bit of prog rock in there, some meditation-y kind of stuff, like everything, trying to touch all the bases, but creating our own, you know, our own sound basically like that. Nick started playing, uh, actually he had already started a cover band called The Rave, and our original drummer from Caught on Klein, Ray Vic, was playing in the rave at the time when I met Nick. And I came over and they were playing music in the living room and we started, I just brought my trumpet. That first day when you showed up, we haven't said a word to each other, you just showed up and mm -hmm. started playing trumpet to that song. So that was kind of like how we introduced they, they played music before they ever spoke a word yeah. to each other. Yeah. I was on my way to rehearsal, and this was about three or f probably three or four months into rehearsing, and they were doing all this construction on Klein Avenue about eight years ago. And uh, seven years ago, I walked through the door and I said, sorry guys, I was caught on Klein. And then Ray was also late and Ray walked in and said, sorry guys, I was caught on Klein. That was just so random that I just, once Ray said it the second time, I was like, that's it, that's it, that's the name. So yeah, after four years of being together and producing two albums, um, Ray uh, had indicated to us that he was strongly considering moving to Atlanta to pursue hip hop drums and pursue his career in that direction. So at that point, um, I don't know, maybe like 2014, 15, something like that. Um, I'd started going to jam nights because I just played drums in my basement, like all, just by myself all the time. And played with, you know, like Jack Whittle, for example, and you'd actually recorded that show. And so, um, yeah, just kind of getting my bearings with the whole community. And then eventually I get the call that Conan Klein needs a drummer for at least a, a gig. And I was like, yes, absolutely. Just to be clear, Nick has his own band, the Nick Kazonis Band, which I tend to play trumpet in from time to time, and Tommy was in that group, but Nick has a different group that's kind of a local group that plays, uh, especially the track lounge, it was like a regular jam night. The two guys had gotten sick, so it just kind of worked out, you know. Yeah, so then Tommy- It was right before COVID. Like, yeah. It was right. right before COVID, so it was like, I got this weird bug, you know, I can't come to the gig. Okay, you know, I'll, I'll call some guys and fill the spot. So then he filled the spots with Tommy and Nick, and then when I saw, like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm gonna show up because, like, we're a band now and we haven't even played a gig yet. Might as well get a rehearsal in for this gig. We had had some shows, but really, like, just starting to get our footing. And then everything just shuts down. I remember we were playing, Nick and I were playing at uh, Off Square, and there was a Mavericks versus someone game on in the background. And I noticed at halftime, they just quit the game. And I was like, oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If they're just cutting the game. And then I remember thinking, like, should we be here? Like, should we be playing? And um, yeah, and then the next day, everything shut down. Nothing works anymore. So then it's kind of like, well, we're not just going to stop playing music. Um, so at that point, we start trying to do like Zoom meetings where we play together and none of, there's a lag, so you can't do that. And we would like bounce ideas off each other, but we really started like recording ourselves and then sending that to one another. Yeah, we produced more content during COVID than we ever have before because we were working primarily on online stuff, recording in our individual homes. We actually recorded at least half of the album we're about to release in our own respective homes and then sent the parts to Nick and Nick was mixing them and everything and then as things started to ease up and we realized, okay, vaccinations are happening, 
It doesn't sound the way we truly want it to sound if we were all in the same room recording together, and so then we, re we re-recorded the entire album. When we came back and we had that first show at, it was the festival um, in Griffith. Most people were vaxxed at that point, everyone still had their masks on, but it was a big outdoor open event. So like the uneasiness was definitely alleviated for the most part. And um, yeah, coming back to that, that was awesome. It was like you could just tune and people were like, yeah! <laughs> you know, everybody was just so excited for something. So it was nice to see. Me, the bass player, what I'm, what I'm thinking about is, it's more, it's more feeling really. It's not necessarily thinking about where I'm going to go. It's more listening to everybody else, um, because there's certain inflections and dynamics, and there's certain. I've been playing with him for so long now. He can hit one note on a string, and I can feel where that's going to go just the way he plays it. And so for me, it's it turns more into uh, just this game of anticipation. What I believe my, my music is, is a purpose for other people. So it's it's to help other people in their lives, not to like be preachy or anything, but just to give people joy, to, to let people know that if you are feeling sad or you're feeling happier, or whatever part of the spectrum of emotion that you're on, there's also someone else that is there screaming in the night to you, you know? And that's like, that's kind of what I feel I am is that conduit, essentially. Everything else in my life, I'm always looking forward. I want to think about right now when I'm on stage. It's kind of hard to describe what I'm thinking because it is moving and shifting. Like you might look at someone in the audience and think something and then it leads to another thing and then you're back to the music. So it's this constant like revolving thought of like the music, the energy, what everyone else is doing, the audience, what I'm doing and just like shifting back and forth there. The end goal would be not thinking, just reacting and letting it come natural. In this house, Please consider joining us for our upcoming album release party on November 20th at 8000 Madison Street in Maryville, Indiana, the Helena Cultural Center. Tickets can be bought online at caughtoncline.com. Food will be sold separately as well as drinks, and there will be some vendors there as well. Lauren Dukes will be opening up. We got Frank Rivoli on acoustic right after that set, and then we're gonna have Chris Dabu, who's gonna be bringing in his three-piece band playing right before us. And then we are going to play through the album, play some, uh, some favorites off the old album, and then come take pictures and say hello to all of you. So come on out. November 20th, 5 p.m., doors open. Caughtoncline.com. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> <laughs>